I would like also to take this opportunity to thank the organizers. So the conference will go on next week, but just to thank for the first week. <laughs> uh, so, so last time, so let me uh, go a little bit back. Uh, so last time I gave an example with a 13-dimensional quadric. Uh, well, so, so, so let me come back to that example because I missed something. If I forgot to say something. Well, it was Q of dimension 13. Uh, so in my example, the splitting pattern was 3, 1, 3. So the shells looked like this. So here's the middle. Uh, well, uh, and so one of the questions was whether such a quadric exists. So it exists indeed. So I checked it uh, yesterday. Uh, night, uh, so it exists over suitable field, and according to what I said you last time, uh, the motivic decomposition looks like this. So we have here a binary motif of dimension seven. So one, yeah, that's it. and uh, then uh, since by the binary motif, I mean there is a connection from uh, between these two tape motors. But by the binary motif theorem, mm. so there are no binary motifs of dimension uh, 10. So it should be a connection to some inner shell. So, and, and here there is no, uh, actually no choice. So it should be like this. So then this, this is the inner, the inner shell, so the third shell. So this point is connected to this point. Uh, and then, uh, so here, I mean, this point should also, so we have such a direct summons, so n, so which can see, so which has rank four of the closure. And then uh, we have shifts, so we shift n inside uh, the first shell, so n1 and also n shifted by two. And the complete decomposition consists then of four motives n and one and two and this binary motif in the middle. Uh, and n is indecomposable. And the binary motif here is also indecomposable. Uh, just a remark. And also looking at this picture, um, uh, one can see immediately, so without, without doing anything, that the first width index of such a quadric is never four, five, oh, and six. It's impossible, so it never happens. So why? So for instance, for, for if it's six, so then the first shell would consist of six state motives. Uh, so it will be uh, here. So, so either. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, it's symmetrically here, and this will be the second shell. So it will be a connection here, uh, and then connection between this point and this point. Well, and, and the shifts. Uh, but then uh, uh, the dimension of this uh, well, binary motif would be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is not possible by the binary theorem. So it should, so this direct summon should be connected to uh, some other Tate motives, but there is no space. I mean, the only possibility, so it can't be connected to anything in the first shell. Uh, the only possibility that it is connected to this, well, that one, 
uh, but then there is no space to shift contradiction. Uh, so, and the same for five and for three, in this example, is possible. Uh, so one is possible, seven is possible, and two, so yesterday I checked it, so yesterday I knew it, uh, so now I forgot it again, whether two is possible, but <laughs> it's easy to c calculate. <laughs> um, well, so n now let me come back uh, to the point uh, so when we finished last time, uh, so we have now three quadratic forms, P, Q, and R. And uh, what, so P is seven-dimensional, uh, Q is eight-dimensional, and R is ten-dimensional. Uh, and last time we, well, proved everything about P and Q. Uh, and so let me just remind the structure of the motif of P, so it's seven dimensional. Uh, so the quadric is five dimensional, and the motif looked like like this and like this. So there were two direct summons. So the motif consisted of this. Outer motive and this inner direct summit. Uh, for Q, uh, we also proved that, uh, yeah, so, so we proved it's a direct sum of this motive plus this motive shifted by one. We will not need it now. And for R, so we started with the form from I cube, and uh, I did not do this computation yet. So this we will do now. Uh, okay, so we will need that picture for the seven-dimensional form. So again, so let me recall the definition of P and Q. So we will need it. So we take an arbitrary three-dimensional subform of R. So then we can write R as A, B, C plus P. The, the complement, and uh, Q is P plus minus ABC. Well, this the definitions of P and Q. Well, and the claim was that Q equals pi modular pi cube, where pi is a twofold Pfister form minus BA minus CA. So of dimension four. So and uh, the splitting pattern of Q is two two. So this is precisely what we needed to get that uh, picture. So recall P is a subform of Q, of co-dimension one. So like constru construction. Uh, so this it was step number two in the proof. So why is it so? So formally, uh, well, I mean this is easy. So this is an easier computation. So let me make it. Uh, well. So, so Q is, just substitute the definition is R minus ABC minus ABC. So it's R minus ABC, ABC. So we can, so it's R minus A times one, the A, A, we see, well, and this is R minus A pi. Yeah, because we can, well, equality means isomorphism as usual because we can divide it by A squared, it doesn't change anything. Well, and then, 
well, an easy exercise that this is actually r minus pi modular i cube. So actually, uh, the following uh, general, well, in general, uh, a pi equals pi modular i n plus one uh, for any a, also for any invertible a, and uh, for any m and Pfister form pi. Well, it's just a general fact which is very elementary. Okay, and R is from I cube by our assumption, so this equals, oh, so we need pi. It's it the same, <laughs> yeah, because it's up to, uh, equals pi modula IQ. So we will use these to conclude that the splitting pattern is 2, 2. So we use here that R is from IQ. Um, well, so the splitting pattern. So formally, before uh, we start computation, we should check that uh, all forms here are anisotropic. Because, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, Q and pi, we, we will need it anyway, several times. So Q and pi are anisotropic quadratic forms. Well, so assume first that pi is isotropic. So then, uh, since it's a Pfister form, it is hyperbolic by a classical fact from quadratic form theory. So now, yeah, in particular, the width index well, it's four-dimensional, so it's two. So A, B, C is a subform of pi, so up to scalar. Yes. By the very definition. Uh, and the width index of pi is two, so it's, there is, so of co so it's of co-dimension one. So there is two. Well, again, exactly as last time, uh, dimension formula ABC is isotropic. Uh, which, but uh, remember, ABC was a subform of R, and R was anisotropic, so it's a contradiction. It's very typical proof, actually, which appears often. Uh, and uh, the second part is a little bit more tricky because we need Arazon Pfista for the other one, for Q. So if Q is isotropic, Well, then remember, we just proved Q equals pi modular I cube. So it means that if we pass to the function field of pi, so pi will become hyperbolic, so it will become zero in the width ring, so Q over this field will be zero, Modulo i cube. It's an element from i cube, and we know that uh, by Arazon Pfister, uh, 
uh, that any anisotropic form, any non-zero anisotropic form in I cube has dimension at least eight, so two power three. But Q is isotropic and, and eight dimensional from the very beginning, so there is no choice. It should be completely split, so it should be hyperbolic for this function field. So Q over K of pi is hyperbolic. Uh, and then another classical fact uh, from quadratic form theory appears as soon as one quadratic form is isotropic, is hyperbolic of the function field of, of an anisotropic Pfister form, pi, so then pi divides q, uh, not quite, so pi divides the anisotropic part of so it's classical fact and very useful fact. Uh, about quadratic forms. Exactly. So, so namely, uh, so we have a f formula, it is so the anisotropic part is pi tensor some other form. So for some quadratic form S. In particular, 4 divides the dimension of the anisotropic part of Q. <laughs> That's in a very naive way. So, and Q itself is 10 dimensional, so plus, plus isotropic. There are not so many cases. So it means, so it, it, it means it's 0, 4. Uh, in particular, it means the width index of Q is at least two. It fits exactly on each step. Uh, and then the same argument, since the width index is at least two and pi is a subform of Q of co-dimension one, pi is also isotropic. So, so, so pi is of, of co-dimension one in Q, and here is 2, so pi is isotropic, which contradicts to the fact that pi is, is a subform of R, which was anisotropic. So R is isotropic, and this is a contradiction. Uh, but actually, we will use this formula once more, just now. So, so we checked that all forms under consideration are anisotropic. So everything is prepared to compute uh, this. Hmm? Uh, because, uh, well, so there are two possibilities. Dimension is zero or dimension is four. So two cases. Uh, well, if dimension is four, uh, so then, uh, so it can be eight because Q is Isotropic, so if it is 4, then it's uh, so dimension of Q is 8, dimension of the anisotropic part is 4, so there are dimension 4 remains, so it's 1 hyperbolic plus, plus because, <laughs> yeah, and uh, if it's 0, it's even more. <laughs> so more so. It, it, it will be four. Yeah. Um, well, so let us take first, first of all an arbitrary field extension uh, such that Q over this field extension is isotropic. Well, then exactly the same argument as above, Arazon Fista. Uh, shows that Q over the function field of pi is hyperbolic. Just exactly the same argument. So we will need this. Well, and in particular, exactly by the same argument, 4 divides the dimension of the anisotropic part of 
this form. And pi divides, pi over e divides q, this form. It's exactly the same. The same arg arguments, and we have this. So now to compute the first bit index, by the very definition, we need to take for e the function field of q. Right, by the very definition. And check what's going on. So we have two cases, either this dimension is zero, or it is four, exactly as above. So in the first case, so by, again, by the very definition, it means this form is hyperbolic. So then, uh, so it's a dimension, so again, a classical fact, elementary fact, that it should be up to scalar, a threefold Pfister form. But it's over the function field, but this is already over the base field. Is a three Pfister form, well, up to scalar. Uh, in particular, Q lies in I cube because I cube is generated by Pfister forms. And again, let us remember Q equals pi modular I cube. We just proved it. It follows pi lies in I cube. Contradiction because pi is a twofold Pfister form, anisotropic twofold Pfister form, so no chances. So this case does not occur. So it's twofold, so two Pfister. And this is a bigger number. So it should be four. Well, so what happens in this case if it is four? So then when we pass uh, to, uh, to the anisotropic part, Again, so, um, so maybe I should write it here. So dimension is divisible by four and uh, pi over e divides q over e and it's exactly by the same reason. So, but this is four dimensional and if uh, this is four dimensional then there is no space. So it should be some alpha times pi over e where alpha is a scalar. Well, and uh, pi is a Pfister form, we know everything, but the, the next step will split it completely. So we already proved here that I1 is 2. And uh, this next step, so it's twofold Pfister form, I2 is again 2. I mean, the step 2 is finished. So and now uh, we come back to a geometric part. Actually, the last step. So I claim that for all field extensions, so the width index of our 10-dimensional form is at least two if and only if the width index of, of the form pi over e is at least two. Uh, well, uh, just an immediate comment, one direction is obvious, so by the very construction Pi is a subform of R. Well, and also this is true of any field extension. So one, uh, okay. So, so this direction is clear, since uh, 
is a subform. So another direction is not trivial. So maybe before. Well, so let me. Okay, let me first prove it, and then so we will need it for motives. So, but let's let do this first. Well, so assume that the width index of R over R over E is at least two. Well, again, we use a Razon Pfister, Hauptsatz. Uh, but now we apply it not to Q but to R. Uh, so R is 10 dimensional. Uh, this condition tells us there are at least two hyperbolic planes which we can split. So 10 minus 2 times 2 is 6 is less than 8. We can apply Arazon Fista. It means this form is hyperbolic actually because it lies in I cube still. Uh, so it means the width index is actually 5, maximal possible. So now, so we have a, a P inside, so a subform of R. So pi is seven dimensional. R is ten dimensional, so it's co-dimension three subform. And uh, by the assumption, so we assume, uh, so we assume this, but actually, so here we got five. So by assumptions, R E has a five-dimensional, totally isotropic subspace. Well, uh, okay. Again, we apply the dimension formula. And we get that. Pi has an isotropic, a totally isotropic subspace of dimension. Well, so we take the intersection. Of dimension at least. Uh, so dimension of this isotropic subspace plus seven. So dimension where P leaves. So it's minus dimension uh, of the whole space, which is 10. Uh, and the result is 2, exactly as we want to show, exactly 2, at least, yeah, because it, it can be, of course, so this is dimension, it, it can be smaller because we don't know exactly, so it's bigger equal. So this is proved, and why we need this? Because there is a result of Vishek. Uh, so a result a la shells, uh, slightly, slightly different, uh, but it's a criterion. So in, the sh so, by, uh, so in the shell method, there is one quadric. So now we have two quadrics, and we want to compare their motifs. So it's. But the philosophy is the same. So the result of Vishak tells us that if we have two quadrics, in our case R and P. Okay, so let me first state what it implies and then what. So it, this result implies that pi and R, so the motives, so have a common motivic direct summon. Uh, so which contains mm, so now I need oh, I erased this picture so I need it again uh, 
So this is the picture for the motif of pi. Uh, well, so we count from zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, uh, which contains the state motif. Well, starting at one. Well, actually, maybe it's better to write here not bigger or equal to two, but strictly bigger than one, and here strictly bigger than one, because we count from zero. So which contains uh, so the Tate motive uh, Z shifted by one. Well, and uh, so general formulation, so criterion of Vishek, uh, uh, tells us the following. If there are two quadratic forms, and if, if this condition holds, uh, instead of one and one, you can put A and B, two numbers. And if there is a Mativic, the indecomposable Mativic direct summon, summoned in one of them, which starts at this state motive, then the same holds for the, second, for the other quadric. So they have a common motive, and we know exactly the location, looking at this. So, I mean, if this condition holds. Uh, so E must be arbitrary, so infinite. Not, uh, it's, it's important that one takes all possible field extensions, in, in particular infinite field extensions. Uh, so in this concrete case, with pi, pi and r, so we are lucky, we know the, how the motive of pi looks like, so we know it contains this binary summons starting in the, uh, well, this shift one, starting at this point. So we conclude the same holds for R. So, so we, we get some information. So let me now draw the motive of R. So R is 10 dimensional, the, the quadric is eight dimensional, so two less. So we know now, so this is, there is such a direct summons. So this is, so let's call it R. So this will be R. The same one by this criteria. Well, but uh, you see, uh, so the condition that this is bigger or equal to two, it's actually equivalent obviously, to the condition that it's five. So actually, uh, so let me write it. So the, the width index of R over E is at least two. So it's equivalent by our consideration that the width index of R is actually five, but actually you can put any number between two and five. So can put any number between two and five. And again, apply this principle of Vishek, so we can, but now for P it's still bigger than one, but for R it's bigger than one, bigger than two, bigger than three, bigger than four, and shift. So it means so this is a direct sum, but also this one, so R shifted by one, uh, this one, and this one are also direct summons here in the motif of this quadric. So this corresponds to one, or, or well, I mean, it depends how we write it. So, so I mean, it, it depends. Oh. Yeah, it's three. Uh, so depending on, well, you see, two, three, four, five, uh, how many? Four, and here four. <laughs> so, uh, and now looking at this picture, we see that uh, there are two more Tate motives, which remain, so it's the rest. So the rest is, is the remaining, the last, Direct summon, and this picture represents a complete motivic decomposition of R. 
Well, but uh, the dimension of this outer, outer motive is 8. And 8 does not have the form to L, to L minus 1 for all L. So it contradicts uh, the binary motive theorem. And the proof is finished. Uh, I proved that uh, there are no anisotropic 10 dimensional quadratic forms in I cube. <laughs> in a very, um, very strange way. <laughs> uh, well, so you can now imagine how, I mean, the, how, how general answer, well, general solution looks like for IN instead of I3. Of course, for I3, there is a, an elementary proof. So maybe I should say one more. So I think last time I said something strange about the binary mode of theorem. So actually, I don't remember. Uh, well, actually, it's a question uh, because you should understand uh, mm -hmm. not what I'm writing, but what I'm thinking. Uh, so I, I'm not sure that he <laughs> everyone uh, managed, but I really don't remember what I told you last time, but I think it's, it was not quite, so I think I just forget, <laughs> forgot some <laughs> assumptions. Uh, well, so binary uh, motive theorem, which we used here um, several times, actually. Mm, so it tells us, at least for quadrics, we formulate it for quadrics. Um, so if so Q is an anisotropic quadric, so, and N is a is a binary direct summand, is an B or the motive of Q. Uh, so it means, uh, so by the definition, so bin that when we pass to the algebraic closure, it will be isomorphic to a sum of two Tate motives. Let's see, A's. So then, uh, the dimension of this motive, so the difference, uh, B minus A should be of the form to L minus 1 for some L. Well, so this is correct formulation. So I do, I'm not sure what I told you, told you last time. Uh, actually, uh, this theorem is, uh, so it has quite interesting proof. In the proof, one uses uh, the Steenroth operations. Uh, in an essential way. Uh, and just also one more geometric method which, which has very concrete uh, algebraic consequences. Well, so I think that's it uh, to, uh, about quadrics. And uh, so in the last 20 minutes, so let me pass uh, to well, arbitrary algebraic groups, and I would like to discuss homological invariance and the, the relations to motives. Just very briefly. Yes.
motives. Uh, well, so the idea uh, uh, of cohomological invariance, it goes back to Serre. So idea, consider uh, well, and uh, uh, well, so the main, so one of the goals is to, so maybe to classify. Uh, algebraic groups, so say simple or semi-simple reductive algebraic groups of an arbitrary field using some invariance and cohomological invariance, uh, so it's a candidate. Uh, well, so I have no time to define them formally. Actually, it, uh, I don't know how to define them because uh, it depends, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, somehow it's not so easy. So I don't, well, it would be optimal to have some very general definition, but I don't know it. And then depending on the situation, it can vary. Uh, so therefore, let me give you some examples instead, instead of giving as a definition by means of an example. Uh, so the line variance of degree two, Uh, like uh, Clifford invariant for quadratic forms. Or uh, for arbitrary groups like Tietz algebra. Tietz algebras. Uh, so in degree three, so there is uh, the Rost invariant. Well, for quadratic forms, it's known as the Arazon inv invariant. Well, and um, oh, so there are like trivial examples in degree one. For instance, the discriminant is an invariant of degree one. So the, Ros the Arazon invariant, it exists for uh, quadratic forms, which are even dimensional, uh, have trivial discriminant and trivial Clifford invariant. So zero Clifford invariant. So for, the, they, for them, one can define an invariant in H3. So maybe I should say a bit more. So where these invariants lie, so invariants of degree two lie, for example, in, in the Brouwer gr group of the base field, so which is H2 uh, KGM. So therefore, degree two, uh, so the Rost invariant, it lies in H3, uh, K, so with these coefficients, so it's just uh, taking all primes and all powers of prime, of all primes together. And some shift by two. Uh, well, for the Arazon invariant, it's Zimo two, simply here. So it can be simplified. Uh, well, and uh, yeah, so th there are uh, some conjectures of Serre which are not solved. So let me give an example. Uh, so Rost uh, Serre conjecture uh, tells uh, that uh, all groups of type of four, or all Albert algebras. So it's the same as groups of type of four. Uh, are classified by three invariants. Um, by two invariants. Well, it depends how you count, again. 
uh, so namely the Rost invariant and uh, an F5 invariant which lies in H5 this coefficient Z modulo 2. Uh, so the point the Rost invariant has two components, prime 2 and prime 3. So there are actually two Rost invariants. Uh, well, it's unsolved. So it's, it's open, so no one knows. Um, but just, uh, so Albert. Well, and now, so there are different uh, geometric methods to, uh, say, to classify invariants, to find all invariants. Uh, so there is one method related to Mativic homology, and there is one method related to, to the Morava K theory. Uh, So I think I don't have time to discuss well, uh, an approach using Mativica homology. So, well, just state this approach, homological invariance. So using Mativica homology. Uh, of certain simplicial schemes. Uh, but this is exactly the way how I constructed some years ago an invariant of degree 5 for E8. So it was based on uh, some computations of the Mativica homology uh, well, of standard simplicial scheme associated with the variety of Borel subgroups for E8. Uh, and uh, so let me talk about an approach uh, using Moravaki theory. So there is a, so let, let me call it guiding principle. Uh, uh, so I guess it goes back to Voivodsky, but it was never stated in this form uh, in his papers. Uh, so namely, Um, if X is a smooth projective writer or some uh, field K, so then, well, so then we need a prime number pi, and uh, we consider the nth Moravaki theory. relative to this prime, so with coefficient rings. Well, Z localized at P, so Vn, Vn minus one, with degree of Vn minus, Vn minus one. Uh, so it's in uh, a generali generalized oriented cohomology theory, so in the sense of Levin Morales, so as I explained in the first lecture, so it can be obtained uh, from, from the algebraic cabordism. Uh, so it's universal for, well, uh, yeah, it's not so easy to motivate, the, uh, or even to give a definition, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, so to, Define it, one needs to give a formal group law, and this formal group law is characterized as follows. Uh, first of all, modular P, it has height n. 
well, so the formal group law for the Morawa K theory well, has height n modulo p. And uh, as far as I know, so modulo p, there is only one such formal group. Well, it's not true. Of, a, okay, of the closure, of, of, of the algebraic closure. So and then one lifts it somehow to this, I mean, this integral coefficients. So one takes a lift. There are many, they're not isomorphic. Take any of them, it's called Moravaki theory. So a Moravaki theory, so there are f f many. Uh, well, so this is, so if you were here on Wednesday, some of you, this is what the talk of Pavel was about. Um, well, and then uh, the following, uh, the following should hold. So it's not a theorem, it's the principle. So then vanishing of cohomological invariance of X Uh, so with speed torsion coefficients, so uh, corresponds uh, to the splitting of the Kn motif of X. I missed something vanishing because there is no n uh, it torsion coefficients of degree uh, in degrees at most n plus one uh, corresponds to the well if all cohomological invariants of x in degrees with p torsion coefficients in degrees one to three are all zero then the Morava motive of X should split and conversely. If it splits, then all invariants in small degrees should be zero. Well, this is a principle. Uh, well, in some cases it is known. For instance, if N is one, so it's your result. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, but uh, if n is bigger than one, then it's also known in some cases. So if n is 1, so then kn, uh, k1 is uh, more or less the same as k0. So and then we are talking about k0 motives. And uh, so the structure of them was determined by Ivan Panin. And uh, uh, so if n is 1, n plus 1 is 2, so no invariance of degree. Uh, so one and two, so it means uh, no Tietz algebras because degree two invariants are precisely uh, the Tietz algebras. So uh, the result is, what, it, it's a very, very particular case of what is proved that the K0 motif uh, of the variety of Borel subgroups Uh, is split if and only if uh, there are no uh, Tietz algebra. I mean, all Tietz algebras are split. So there are no invariants of degree two. Uh, well, but going to higher 
values here. Uh, so one can show uh, the Rost invariant is zero. So more precisely, the p component, since we are we do all sorry, since all statements are relative to a prime number, so the p component of the of the Rost invariant is zero uh, if and only if the second morale motive of the variety of Borel subgroups is split. Well, and also for quadratic forms, uh, one can, sh yeah. Ah, this is what, again, we, we do with, pa uh, with Pavel in that huge paper. Uh, and, uh, you see, again, so this is an invariant of degree three, so it fits into this principle exactly. And uh, for quadratic forms, uh, so we have the following result. Uh, so, so Q, so a quadratic form lies in the n plus second power of the fundamental ideal, if and only if the Kn motive of Q splits. Uh, well, again, uh, this fits exactly because it has invariance of degree n plus 2, but not n plus 1, uh, and less. Yes, so this is uh, even dimensional case. Ah, yeah, and Q is even dimensional. Uh, yeah, um, because for the odd dimensional case, uh, it's a little bit slightly different. Um, Splits. Um, so how I how should write it? Uh, assume from the very beginning dimension of Q is even. So then this equivalence holds. Well, uh, okay, so, so when I have one or two minutes, but I really don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, because somehow I have too much uh, uh, for two minutes, and if I start, I will never finish, <laughs> or at least it's risky. <laughs> um, well, uh, so did I f forget to say something? Uh, about Maroa. Uh, yeah. There is one more evidence for this kind of principle, namely that if key and motive splits, then what? Oh. Okay, so, so maybe I, I will tell one sentence uh, uh, that uh, also general fact, so it's proven fact, uh, that if uh, X uh, so satisfies. The Rost nilpotent uh, well uh, uh, satisfies uh, so the Rost nilpotence principle, which is true, for instance, for all twisted flag varieties. Well, okay. X is a twisted flag variety. And uh, the Kn motive of X splits. So then uh, all Kn motives of X split uh, for all M. Um, smaller or equal to n. Uh, so it's, so actually, so one can, yeah. Uh, so one can consider, so the Moravaki theory is some series of obstructions for, for existence of cohomological invariance. Uh, actually, uh, if k, so k1 is k0, if n is pretty big, then Moravaki theory is the same as Chow. And then we have some sequence of deformations from K0 to Chow, which is somehow 
controls uh, cohomological invariance. What is the last uh, uh, well, so, so we have a sequence, okay, k1, k2, uh, oh, and so on. Uh, so this is k0, uh, but from some point, well, depending on the dimension of your variety, it will be the same as chow. Well, chow with this well, chow tensor. Well, if you send Vn to 1, uh, well, and so we have some kind of deformations, and each step uh, controls invariance of degree 2, 3, 4, and so on. Well, according to this guiding principle. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I think uh, I can s stop here. So, so, thank you for your attention. No, no, no. It's uh, well. It's it depends on the dimension. We should plug in x here, yeah, yeah, so because it depends uh, on the dimension of x. Mm -hmm. But uh, nevertheless, yes. So it's okay. on the level of principle. Or no, 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 no. I think I think it's proven. Yeah, yeah, I think it's 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 a theorem. No, no, it's a theorem. Uh -huh. so, moral one can exactly tell the bound. I think dimension of x should be bigger than p power n. Maybe plus one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and uh, second question of mine: This is also the in the vanishes if and only if k to the scope of variety. Yeah. Yeah, k to more of split. So uh, firstly, uh, am I right that this is uh, at least implies that? Uh, create a motive uh, of the barrel variety. Uh, not create a motive, but create a theory. The value of create two uh, mm -hmm. of, uh, of the barrel mm -hmm. variety mm -hmm. is z plus z plus. Yeah, yeah, it's a free a billion, three yeah, three module over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and second question, uh, in the same way, uh, does it mean that uh, I'll say you know how to decompose the diagram in this way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. In this case, yes. yeah. I mean, yeah. It's just that. well, uh, sum of Tate motives. So it's yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. But yeah. I know mm. that in some cases, I mean, even in k not case, even if all the invariants uh, vanish, and I mean, uh, the state algebra. Mm -hmm. uh, nevertheless, uh, you need to give some explicit projectors, uh, oh. and this is even in this case uh, pretty tricky. Yeah. Well, so the proof does not go in this way, so in the proof we don't uh, write any concrete formulas for projectors. Uh, well, so in this sense, if you wanted for all, say for all G mod B at once, uh, it, it, it is not so clear. Thank you.